Okay. Okay. So I showed you the video on Alihio and his charges, that video from the T. Mm -hmm. And um, let me go to it. You want me to play it and we talk about it? Um, as long as you ain't gonna get in trouble. I don't think so. You don't know a lot. Renee. About, you don't know a lot about this. Like you fairly new to it. Mm -hmm. I thought that was important because I think it's important to see how people react into it. Because this is something that's been going on for a long time. And I feel like it's kind of ridiculous that he been abusing women for this long. And just now something is being done about it. But I guess it do take some time to build a case. Mm -hmm. And everything is kind of coming in full circle. But I was talking to somebody and I was telling them that um, it's... I feel like this is an amazing tool to teach women how to protect themselves from narcissistic abuse mm -hmm. because he recorded everything and he was a really addicted to attention. Yeah. But that's like the blessing in it. So I feel like the universe kind of created it like this. And at the end, he felt invincible. That's why it got so bad where he was slapping people on camera, mm -hmm. um, revealing more of the abuse because he was living in an illusion. And when the, the police kept coming to the house and then leaving, he felt like he was invincible. And I felt like that um really made that monster show up that's always been there but he recorded it and put it on yeah. live so and i feel like this in itself should be enough evidence true like, it really should be but yeah, it was a lot mm -hmm. but let me start it Okay. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. I don't know what I did with my water. Dang, it's way over there. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Oh. Okay. I don't know how do I bring okay. All right, you ready? Mhm. Mm she wildin', look. She wildin' outside, fighting neighbors and shit. Glass and shit. I just got glass in my foot crazy. Hey, I do wish that she added the dates because um this is like a recent time, but some of the in, some of the uh footage is from like some time before. years ago. Mm hmm Okay. But this was this year. She wow. And who is leaving? 
Um, Malia? Yeah. Okay. This is, trying to leave. She was trying. Yeah, this was his um, current main female. Um, but he treated her like the worst. Like, mm. she got like the most bullying. Mm-hmm. But he have every main girl he made her his main girl he like beat her the most so it wasn't even necessarily an enviable spot or was it no nah, because they wanted to be in that position because they viewed that as love mm. so that's why when they was chasing her down I don't think she put that part in him but uh, the girl, Nateri, uh, Janae, she was yelling at Malia and was telling her, like, you know, you so selfish, like, you get the most dick. You so selfish. So That's what she worried about? <laughs> yeah, but that's, like, they mentality. That's their mentality. Because he programmed them to be that way. Like, he talked down on them and tell them that, all they really good for is that to be a servant to a man or to be um, open sexually to him. So that's I, how they measuring they were. Yeah. Like I was talking to somebody and they made a point that they felt like they normalize rape over there. I don't know if you could say yeah. that word, so I'm going to say the R word, okay? Okay. Yeah, I don't know why, but um, because you couldn't really say no. Oh, we could finish the video. I pointed out in the video. Okay, and you can skip through whatever parts. Okay. So it don't be like a three-hour long video. Yeah. Oh. Me to go get back. it's okay. No, it's not. Oh, okay. Now, was this in the U.S.? That sounds mm -hmm. like one of their neighbors. Yeah. Out there, concerned. I feel like I heard her say it looked like abuse to her or mm -hmm. something like that. And who was that recording and talking? One of the members. Um, oh, I don't okay. remember his name, but it's one of the dudes that are there. I don't know if that was a Leo or not. Nah. Okay. But you could tell, like, he could, he didn't even know how to talk to her. Like, these people. Yeah, he was like, you all right, ma'am? <laughs> I was like, I don't think she concerned about, she concerned yeah. about that girl well-being, not her own. And then he told her to go in the house and, like, mind her business. And she was like, no, this is my business. So it's like, you could kind of tell he's, like, under the programming because, he is trained that a woman should just stay in her place. So it's like yeah. he don't even know how to talk to a regular woman, like a everyday woman that don't live under this abuse. Mm. Okay. That's not an abuse. How many people live there? Okay. Th this is in the middle of my rest. It's okay. You're okay, ma'am. <laughs> I'm surprised they have a whole gang of police over here, all that yelling. They didn't smell good. They didn't smell like a poison. I don't want to kill you. Why are you killing me? Let me go. Why are you killing me? Let me go. Move. Let me go. Sounds like a demon, boy. Yeah. See. When you are put on a narcissistic abuse, like, and when you do finally explode, like, I guess it'd be so much rage under, mm -hmm. because they antagonize you until you get to the point that you're going to explode, and then they, they try to make it seem like you crazy, mm -hmm. but now, nah, spiritually, I do, I feel like that's exactly what it is, though, spiritually. Like, she was trying to release it, but she did end up coming back, and I do feel like 
it's a internal struggle. It's like they they addicted to him. He's extremely loving, extremely forgiving, literally wouldn't hurt a fly. Did I ask for a strawberry? Bitch, did I ask for a strawberry? No. Huh? No, my chief. Don't you act in your motherfucking life. Give me no motherfucking strawberry unless I ask for one, motherfucker. Pushing three. Smack that nigga. No hesitation, oh, boy. Me, yeah, because he punished you if you do. But do you feel like the members should also be held accountable for their actions? Yeah. Especially when they go to drag people back, people that's trying to leave. Um or like especially with kidnapping charges because i'm like these people are ready to go and y'all doing everything in y'all power to keep them from leaving mm -hmm. like to me that's holding people hostage okay as far as the violent i don't know i don't know won't necessarily speak on that but do you feel like you should have some kidnapping charges do you feel like you understand um, brainwashing? Yeah, for the most part. Okay. I mean, I have, I, I feel the same that they should be held accountable, but um, I also understand that some of these members, they've been there for a long time. And when they originally came, they didn't know what they was getting into. And over that time, they've been like completely broken where um, like they can't even think outside of the programming. It's similar to like Charles Manson. Mm -hmm. And he had those people kill them, but it was a whole, he trained their minds to just do what he say because they believe in this judgment day that he was talking about and felt like they was doing the right thing. Um, yeah. I can understand that. And I even feel bad for them in some ways. Like after this, after I watched this video you sent me, I watched uh, another short video um, off the channel where it was talking about, I guess, a lady who was part of the original uh, group, I think back when it was called Melanation. And she yeah. was saying, you know, she came there, they were talking about living off the land and all this stuff. And then it started turning like abusive and sexual and stuff. So she left. But I can understand, you know, what originally, initially what she was talking about joining, how that sounded appealing. Yeah. And I understand how people get so deep into it that it's normalized like this is the normal to you and even leaving it how that might be so foreign to you at that point at some point it don't even feel right mm -hmm. but um I feel bad for them in some ways but I still feel like y'all adults they got to be held accountable mm. okay I agree. Fuck is wrong with these niggas, man. No fucking God, nigga. Fuck this phone, nigga. I made this phone and I made you, nigga. Ever disrespect God, nigga. You don't think for yourself. You too. You got a problem with that? No, white boy? No, I was just... I was just nah, you ain't listening to shit. Shut the fuck Okay, so this white boy, because this is still current times. Like, this was mm -hmm. recently. Um, he came out of nowhere and joined. Mm -hmm. I think that he might have been like an agent, like an undercover agent in the case. I'm honestly surprised they let him in. 
Yeah, but see, Alihio was at such a delusional point. I really believe that at this point, he thought that he was God. Because mm -hmm. the police kept coming and going and not really giving him no trouble. So that's why I you think he, he can mm -hmm. do anything and get away with anything he wants. Yeah. And I think that's a common thing that happened to narcissists, especially if they haven't gotten in trouble in a while. Mm -hmm. Fuck them. This man, who goes by Captain Ace, says he's part of the group Carbon Nation. Ace calls Bishop the head of the international organization. This is one of the most troubling experiences I've ever had. <laughs> the man... And you know what? He had a child that was in here. And I think the child had got taken away. And they have not talked about that at all. Who? The guy with the uh, fro? Yeah. The guy, the guy with the... With the heart tattoo on his neck. Yeah. So I was wondering about, because I've seen this in like other cult situations, when people be having kids inside the cult, and then the children that were born into these cults go on to be like abused by the same cult members. And I was like, mm, oh, all these people, especially the ones with kids get out of here for these kids get old enough to be folded into that cycle of abuse well a lot of the children like some of these women they have kids that they haven't seen in years since mm -hmm. they joined the cult and left their kids so they just left the kids yeah and some of them have felt bad about it at times and this girl back here this mm -hmm. girl right here um, she actually was pregnant at one point and she lost the baby. Dang. But if they get sad about their kids, he will punish them for it. So they can't, they're not even uh, allowed to feel attached to anything outside of yeah. this cult. I'll call it for what it is. Mm -hmm. And he completely detached them from their family make them disown their family, make them be mean to their families. So he make them isolate them. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, it's, okay, I do feel like they should be held accountable, but I could really tell that they not thinking straight. Like, he in jail, and this is their strategy to be up here calling him God and trying to telling these blatant lies when it's on camera. <laughs> like people can't see that how he treated y'all. So it's like they really are delusional. But I was listening to somebody else who said that they could be just acting or something like acting as if they're that delusional but i don't really mm. feel like that i feel like it's real delusion what you think i mean okay for the men specifically like what do they get out of this because when i was reading comments it seemed like they just get ments or mentally physically and verbally abused and get whatever woman they were with when they came into the picture took <laughs> <laughs> so what is yeah. in it for them well somebody did mention the fact that like this person right here with the heart on his neck mm -hmm. um he was in the military and he also went to college but he was accused of molesting somebody in his family mm. Um, so they say that a lot of these people seem to be kind of like running away from something. Oh, so they almost get to like reprogram their reality. Mm, yes, exactly. Exactly. Mm. And that most I people guess, refer to I guess I understand it from that point. 
Because other than that, I don't understand. And they could have had really, because I feel like not only Aaliyah originally, he would erase your sins, like tell you nothing is wrong with you, uh, tell you that your urges to molest kids is natural and shit. Um, oh, I'm definitely worried for these kids. And tell you that your STDs don't really exist. Tell you that you don't have to take your medication because the earth can heal you alone and stuff. So it's like, and I feel like these people is so desperate to be accepted that, you know, somebody just telling them, showing them this false sense of love, they just eat it up. But I do feel like there's a, you know, a, we need to take a deeper look at like mind control because it's. A, I feel like it's really real. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like these people is thinking with their own mind. It's like they um running a computer chip, and it's the cult yeah. leader programming i do feel like they are programmed and not thinking clearly i do believe that yeah i would decide on uh them being delusional they give so much of their power away especially yeah. to men like they give so much control to him from what i saw yeah like even to just a uh, control just to make a small decision yeah okay you go ahead nature boy i refer to him as god i believe that he is god i met him online that was my initial contact with him i seen that he was teaching knowledge that was superior to any other scholar or any other leader that i had encountered at the time they look to alihio you know to raise them to give them knowledge to teach them to show them the way mm -hmm. Now, this video, I think, is probably, like, maybe a year ago or maybe a year and a half ago. Mm. <laughs> she's an ex-member, um, and she's an ex-member. Uh, this is Nateri. Mm. What's the other woman's name with a head wrap? Child, I can't remember. Oh. Um... I don't remember. I really don't. <laughs> At first, I thought that was Alihi on the back. No. When I was first is... watching it. I don't know who he Did those is, people uh... used to be in the cult, too? Nah. Oh, no. Okay. No, no, no. I think he did go there for a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think he went there with his wife and... But I think he went there because he wanted to challenge Elihio, like, oh. make it seem like, you know, he's a better person in charge or something. It was like some type of competition. Mm. Like, some of these people that's in this energy is really crazy. Like, people have all types of crazy motives. That's why I be worried about this, this case sometimes. But it's just too much evidence. It really is. It shouldn't be no reason why his ass don't get locked up for life. It really shouldn't. Sure. It really shouldn't. Somebody died there. Dang, for real? Yes. Somebody lost, lost a baby there. Um, He beat those women so bad to the point that they almost died. So... And do he ever beat the men to that extent? It seems like it's always the women I'm hearing he, about. I think that he does, but they don't talk about it. I do wish they would show that more, though. Um, and the men who leave, they don't really talk about it because I think they feel so emasculated mm. that they just kind of disappear. So, and if they do talk about it, they don't talk about their abuse. They talk about the abuse that they seen done on the women. And I mm -hmm. feel like that's kind of like deflecting. Mm -hmm. He is teaching them that it is okay to beat on your women. 
Mm-hmm. Right. You have women there that has never been touched by their husband until they seen Eligio put his hands on his women. Mm. It's not okay. It's not okay. I gotta say, the, the universe is making me do it. Like, mm -hmm. Solar, he put his hands on Zoka. Mm. She's pregnant. Fuck wrong with you. Come on, man. You all right? But then can we blame him? The right. man that he looks up to is, is, is telling him and showing him Start that this is okay. Yeah, exactly. It's not okay. It is not okay. Pregnant or not, you should not be putting your hands on a woman. Yo. Your question about Nateri, Nat 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 I'm going to read it. Because, you know, back in the day when I seen these videos, I didn't really, um, I felt like I had way too much empathy for her to really see her. Mm -hmm. But now when I look back at these videos, like even now I could see that this girl don't have good intentions, like. I'm going to read. You said Nateri don't seem like she's speaking with the same conviction the other women is and almost seems shocked by some of the stuff the other women was telling. I don't know if that means anything. And how do you feel? Well, I'm going to come to that next question later. Okay. But which part did you, was it this part of the video that you was realizing that? Yeah. And, you know, it may be because I already got some insight yeah. on her. But it just almost seemed like she just wanted to be a part of the video. But it does. But yeah, it was like a little bit disingenuous. Let me tell the people, because the insight she gave, like, I talked to you like you're my homegirl about the situation. Like, I told you what happened. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so that's the insight that she has. So she's saying that that could influence. But I'm considering that, too. Like, is I'm influenced by current times but not nah, i think that she was always a teacher attention seeking i don't really think she ever was genuine and she was putting on an act for most of the time yeah. and i did see her palms even people not in it and she had a very very short um heart line y'all should look that up look that shit up i ain't gonna even say it but I can see in her body language here, like how she interject, like she want to um, be in the leadership position. Maybe not leadership, but she uh, fighting for like the spotlight. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel like she got to say she don't really have that much to add, but she feel like she need to say something and then as the video go on like to me she almost started looking uncomfortable with what the other woman is saying yeah and i was like i wonder if she feel like she she's saying too much or what yeah. mm, let me let me look so yeah maybe during the latter half of that conversation I might have misinterpreted her uh, being uncomfortable, but maybe what the other woman was saying took place at a time where she wasn't a part of carbonation. So she was, I don't want to say that's her first time hearing it, but she wasn't as familiar with it. And she was just kind of sitting back and listening like that wasn't something she could speak on. But I might have misinterpreted that as her being uncomfortable with what was being said as it just being somewhat new to her yeah and I can't because I don't really remember if she was there 
at that time that that woman was there when she was talking about her part. So I can't really confirm or deny it, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, we just inserting this so we could be fair. Clarify. Yeah, to clarify, be fair. Um, because I don't have anything against Nateri and definitely not you, but I don't have no personal personal vendetta against her. Okay. Or whatever. I'm just going by her actions, but yeah. Understood. Yep. All right. <laughs> what are you doing? Perpetuating the same generational curses that we're trying to fucking break. Mm -hmm. And women, it's not okay to put your hands on your man. It's yeah. not okay to put right. your hands on your man, but I, but so I think it's because even at this time, she was already planning on going back because I feel like her mission is to become like a something like a leader of the group and she wants mm. to be known for transmuting the energy of it mm. so she do feel like she's trying to put herself in a leadership role yeah and maybe that's why she didn't want people to say too much because she planned on going back so she could complete whatever mission that she felt like she had with this mm. Besides, Nana, don't no woman put their hand on their man there. Mm -hmm. Boomy <laughs> put his hands on his wife. Mm. According to Sunflower, he ain't never did that shit until he got the carbonation. Sweet girl. Sweet. It's not okay. Alihio put his hands on Nana and Malia. It is not okay. Mm -mm. It's not. To the point you can hear it in another other room and everybody's like, oh, they'll Fucking be okay. Fucking shit up, man. Oh, every, it'll be okay. And, and no then the niggas, bring, the no niggas think it it's okay. They telling us not chill. Everything gonna be all right. Baba G got it. He know what he doing. What? You know what? And you know what? Zoka tried to call him out on it because the baby, you know, was inside. So the baby got involved. And the thing is like, you don't, you don't. The baby got involved. And to where as though she has scratches on her face, on her back, on her arms, because they can't control themselves. The least you could have did was put the fucking baby out the room. Which they did. But they didn't do that until she was hurt. And the thing is, like, when you when someone tried to call him on her shit, he said, mind your business. Fourth of July? Yeah. When he beat the shit out of Nana? Hmm. Okay. And this is another thing, like, you know, she said that they could have put the baby outside the room, and then she said, which they did. I know yeah. she, she does that a lot. Like, she... Kind of backtracking to vent. Yeah. Certain actions. And I think she do it because she want to look like the devil's advocate or whatever. Mm -hmm. Because um, even in that recent video that she did, like, she keep trying to make it seem like she care about these members, those, her family and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But going by her actions, I don't feel like that's how she really feel. And I don't feel like it's nothing wrong with that. She should be honest. But the fact yeah. that she lie about it makes me feel like, you know, she just ain't a good person mm -hmm. because... She's not being real. And I feel like she lie about it. It's because she wants to look like a this spiritual teacher that understands everybody's flaws and, you know, some bullshit. It's under some bullshit. Mm. But I ain't going to talk about her too much um, or whatever. I ain't gonna talk about it too much. The baby is extra cute, though. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Let's do it. So what happened? All right. So fourth, the, the night of Fourth of July. He looked like he want this tea, child. <laughs> like he he listening, child. He really like, girl, go ahead, tell me. Basically. 
Like he in the cut, but he listening. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, sometimes I feel like even though babies don't be understanding, they understand that energy though. They might yeah. not understand your words. Mm-hmm. Yep. We walk to the park. All of us. We walk to the park. And it's a full moon. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. We looking up at the sky, looking at the moon. It was beautiful. Nice ass vibe. But Alihio flirting with the other women. Nana gets upset. She doesn't like him flirting with other women. So it gets to a point when he starts talking. And he's, he he, he likes to talk. So he gets to talking. I don't remember what he was talking about. But he got us all standing around him while he talking. He drunk as shit. It's another thing. Margaritas. He need to stop fucking drinking. Tequila. My nigga, you already said that that's one of your demons. You already said that in Babylon, you couldn't drink because you didn't know how to fucking control yourself. Anyway, yeah, he was drinking. Patron. And he looks at Nana, and he like, what's up with you? She says nothing. He was like, nah, you got something on your mind, talk. She was like, nothing. So he keep asking her. She keeps saying nothing. He ends up walking up to her. And I don't know. It's like he reached for her or something. And she did like this. Like to wipe his hand away. So he grabs her by her neck. And slams her on the fucking ground. Make us all get in a circle around them. So can't nobody see what the fuck is going on. He continuously slamming on the ground. Smacking her in her face. Choking her until she can't fucking breathe talking about yeah, yeah, I'm the one that give you life I'm the one that lets you breathe That's This crazy. shit went on for hours That's crazy. To where though he made us he ended us he ended up Taking her out the circle All the way down to the, end of the, park. All the way down to the end of the park To keep doing it and laid on top Keep beating her ass, ass And then lay his big ass on top of her then started crying, please don't leave me. Bitch, what? <laughs> what? Fuck out of here. It's not okay. Then we get up and we go back to the house like shit ain't never happened. Shorty dress ripped. Nice ass dress. Blood on her scarf. Scratches and shit all on her face. It's not that Nana don't want to leave this time, y'all. She's scared. She's scared that nigga gonna fucking kill her. Because he said it. Now, he keeps saying it's because of his daughter. He keeps saying, I don't want to lose my daughter. Stop telling us to go to the police. We don't fuck with the police. You don't want to lose your daughter. You, clearly, you do want to lose your daughter. Because if you didn't want to lose your daughter, you wouldn't be acting the way that you're acting. Mm-hmm. This behavior. Got to stop. Got to. And that's the thing, what it is, it's not just mentally abusing, there's physical abuse being going on in there. Exactly. So that's why it needs to be dismembered. That's why it needs to be disbanded. That's why it needs to be revised. Shut the fuck if you've down. Never, if you- He beat me that day, and he made the men tighten up the circle. This, this is the girl that they was talking about. Um, he had a daughter with her. Mm. When they was talking about just before that story, this was the girl that was in the circle. Oh, okay. Circle, and everybody watched. And by the end of the beating, I was practically naked. You getting sleepy? Mm, a bit, but I've been sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell me when you get too sleepy, and then we could just pick it up tomorrow. Then, okay. In in the in the middle of that circle, and um, that was something that I had to deal with moving forward in carbonation, and I was very embarrassed about that, and I knew people did not look at me at the same at that moment and i you know i at that point i was just trying to be there for the sake of my daughter 
to see if it could work out to have a relationship with her father. And it just got worse and worse. Every moment that rolled by, it just got worse and worse. So I don't know. I think I really got love for this girl because I think she's a really powerful spirit. Mm -hmm. Some of the women there that I feel like they were really genuine people and real victims and stuff like that. Because when she was there, she did get into a fight with one of the girls. Um, but it's not the same as, cause I felt like she was truly like in love with him and he really, I think he didn't necessarily love her, but he felt like she was special. Mm -hmm. So he did, um, sell her a fantasy at first mm -hmm. and everything. So, mm-hmm. I uh well just from this video I like her too and she kind of convinced me to look at these people humanity rather than just kind of be like yeah y'all they're crazy yeah mm -hmm. for sure every time I would uh not want to agree with how he wanted to live and what he wanted to do uh it became very physically abusive he would hit me in my face he would choke me out he would punch me he would kick me um he would scream at me uh he would slap me uh any anything anything he could do he would do so that you know he could have full control over my mind and um i became scared the last time that I went back, I became like... Um, yeah, she is somebody that did leave and go back a few times. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like her intentions was different than others. Like, she had a child with him, and I think that mm -hmm. she went back because he bagged and pleaded her and made it seem like he ain't going to do it no more. Um, but every sure. time she went back, he, like, punished her for it. He was mm. worse and worse. Mentally disturbed at that point of, like, why would he even want to treat me that way? Because I didn't... I'm not here to harm nobody. I'm not here to, like, take nothing away from you. I just want to make the situation better because we have a daughter together. <laughs> the people in and the comments... Yeah, girl, that's why I don't be reading them sometimes. Cause they a lot of time. She be back. <laughs> like, damn. <laughs> I saw somebody talking about that's what her ass get. Mm. I'm like, ooh, we yeah, savages out here in the comments. Yeah. Um a lot of people attracted to this energy is broken. Like, these are women, and some of them are women that's in love with the cult leader. Mm. Yeah, you know, I did see somebody say, I don't know if I if that was a threat or they truly wish they was in this woman place, but they're like, oh, I wish I could have been there. I wish I was there. They could wow. also be saying that, child, I don't know what you... It yeah. could go either way. Yeah. These people, some of them crazy, for real, for real. Why wouldn't you want to make the situation good for our daughter? Like, And some of them have very, like, let it out, ma, and stuff. Some of them just hungry for information, but they're not mm. really feeling and empathizing yeah this is like entertainment to them which is really sadistic to me yeah like, i don't know i be wondering what world they come from like they must be so used to this mm -hmm. and they be sensitized to it yeah i feel like that'd be a lot of people online unfortunately yeah because they feel like they could hide but damn even if you don't got no picture of yourself, are you faking to be in somebody else? Like, this is who you really is? 
that's how I be looking like, damn, this who you really is? Yeah. It's, when nobody you get to be it. that fly on the wall, yeah, and divest it from any consequences of the situation. Mm-hmm. And don't care about the pain they cause. Mm-hmm. After after that beating, you know, I really just couldn't. I couldn't turn that off. That hurting me so bad that. From that, from that day, I had started to plan my escape. And when I started to plan my escape, it, it, it just didn't go well. Because if I had showed any sign of leaving or any sign of not wanting to be around him, he was going to physically abuse me. And he did. You know, it, it got to the point where at the end, um, he just you know threatened to hit me and i was like no i don't you know i don't want to get hit so i had to suppress how i felt i had to suppress my worries and my doubts and everything and i just i just kept moving on to proceed with my escape and this was a couple months later because he had took my documents like he says that he makes it easy for people to leave and he makes it easy for people to just walk away. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Anybody. And this girl could really articulate herself really well. And she come from a genuine place. Like, also, she hold a lot of power. Like, uh, people want to listen to her. So I hope that she's play a major part in the case. Mm. She should. She should. That's true. Because I feel Anybody like who got out. Especially anybody who got out and still talking about it, I think should be able to be a part of the case. Yeah. Anybody who is there who wants to leave, they have to ask him for permission to leave. And when they ask him for permission to leave, it's a, it's a speech, a day long speech, if not two days long of a speech to coerce them into staying so that he can have control over all of the people. And, and and what all of these people do is they wind up sneaking away, you know. So eventually, to to backtrack to the, the you know me planning my escape when I was in Cali, he confiscated all of my documents. He took everything away from me, everything. And um, prior before that, the other times he like broke my phone because I was trying to leave. He broke my car, like my credit card. He broke it took all of my identification so i was like damn what's the easiest way for me to at least at least have my passport and my id so that i can get on a plane and be able to get eliana through the border because mind you he neglected eliana's paperwork in the process so you know you know what i'm saying he doesn't give a fuck about that so now i have to make sure that i have a way to get to where i need to be this last time so what i did was I sat with myself in the bathroom and I cried and I cried and I was like, damn, bro, why did I have to put myself through this again? Like, why did, like, I just stayed strong in that moment and I was like, it was because of, it was because of this point. Vel, you needed to come to this point so that you can stop running back and forth, so that you can stop going back and forth. You needed this experience so that you can truly see. So, you know, after some time, I, um, of crying and stuff i just got myself together and i was like i'm just gonna have to chalk it up and i'm gonna have to do what he tells me to do so that i can reel my documents in and it worked you know so during the process i had to do everything he wanted me to do and i was not happy i had to make it seem like i was happy so all of the times that y'all had seen me on live you know, the marriage, like all that. I did not want to do any of that. I did not want to get married. I did not want to get on live. I did not want to talk. I did not want to say nothing. I didn't want to protect him. But I couldn't speak out because I knew that that would become physically abusive for me. I knew that I, was gonna, I wasn't going to be able to reel my documents in that way. So what I did was I participated in all the sexual activity. Like... Yeah, you can really feel it in her body language. It's very disturbing to her because she cover her face like that.
Mm-hmm. You could tell it was very getting choked up. Yeah. Mommy, I'm right here. Oh. <laughs> it got to the point where he separated the women and the men, and he put us in two different houses and. He was in the house with the women, and the men were neglected, pretty much. And when he got all the women in the house together, that same day, he had proceeded to have sex with everybody. That same day, all of the women, including me. And um, he did whatever he wanted to with us. Whatever he wanted to. And he did it for about two weeks. Until, you know, the other women were like... Well, Zoka, she wanted to be with Solar, and she was pregnant, you know, with Solar's baby, so she wanted to be with him, and Nature Boy was still having sex with her, and she didn't have a choice. <laughs> she didn't have a choice. And Zoka is, um, the person that her baby, um, she gave birth to a stillborn. Oh. Damn. Yeah. And while she was pregnant with most of the women, when they was pregnant, he didn't get them no medical care. A lot of them almost lost their lives. Um, he mistreated them while they was pregnant. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's in this video, but I'm gonna send you the other video where they do her interview and she talk about um, how after she had her baby, and because she didn't get proper medical care, um, she could have lost her life. And when she was healing, he was calling her weak. He wouldn't even let her heal properly from stitches and everything. Dang. Make Maybe her I let them go to the hospital to have their babies? Yeah. Uh, but he wasn't. It took because she was in so much pain. But if she didn't go to the hospital, she probably could have died. And then when she was healing from it, um, he mistreated her, made her um, be sexual with him, had her out walking and stuff like that because he was calling her weak. Traumatizing. Mm-hmm. So she slept with him and he wanted to. And she was. She even wanted to be with him. She even wanted to be with Nature Boy. So she went she went behind True with the child, with True's child, to have sex with Nature Boy. And they did. And she was wanting to have a relationship with Nature Boy, with True's baby, with True there. And um that didn't work out though because Nature Boy doesn't like she but like that so all, all of the other all women right. want to have sex Pause with them. everybody quick. answer me this because i'm pretty sure i don't know if i'm right or not but i think later on in the video i pieced together that sheba is one of the darker skinned girls there yeah in there is all the women that all his preferences are they all light skinned no Oh, okay. Um, the first girl I that thought he, I was noticing the pattern. Well, not necessarily not. as light as her, uh -huh. but no. lighter on the spectrum. He had a the first girl that he called his chiefest or whatever. She was a dark, darker skinned girl. Um, and the next girl is darker than her. He said that he actually preferred dark skinned women, but I think what he actually looked for is just um because he likes strong women. Submission. Mm. But he get a joy out of breaking them. Mm, that's what I was gonna ask. Mm -hmm. Does it come from 
uh, does his desire for them come in the tearing them down and making them submit to his will? I think so. Because I remember you asked a question about the um, him being gay. And I think that he has a real hatred towards women. Like, he, he felt like his mom abandoned him. Um, so he just have like a, and I feel like he try to, he find strong women. And then it's like, feed his manhood if he's able to break them and make them submit to him. Mm. But I feel like he is punishing these women from some childhood trauma. Because I think at one point he talked about a woman. I think he talked about a woman that I, I might have, this might have been a reading. So I guess I ain't going to bring up that point because it might have been a, a reading. But I think a woman in his childhood abused him. Uh, but so also, man, this be so common. Common yeah. with so many men. Mm-hmm. With um, them taking out how they were treated by usually it seemed like their moms. Or sometimes it can even be like, a former girlfriend or something that they were really in love with and then they proceed to take that out and do their best to destroy every subsequent woman after that Mm -hmm. and i think that's a trickle down effect from like post-traumatic slave syndrome because they desperately because they be feeling entitled to your love from one like People go through life and they get cheated on and they get with people that is not so good and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. man, they get so crazy about it. Like they be like vowed to be in trifling for the rest of their life because some yep. young girl from their youth broke their heart. Or rejected them. Mm-hmm. And now they don't even know how to act. But I feel like it's because they've been trained to be that fragile. Mm-hmm. And it's not to downplay any trauma that, you know, some of these men might have gone through. But we see it all the time. The trauma that young girls go through at the hands of men, sometimes their dads, other men in their family. And it's not to say no woman, you know, seeks to get her revenge on all men, but I don't feel like the majority of women who experience that make that their mission in life Mm -hmm. is to punish every man they come across the way you see some men do. Yeah, because I feel like women be still looking for love, like Mm -hmm. almost trying to redeem the men who let them down. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, it is a difference psychologically, for sure. Everybody's competing to have sex with him. And why he's got me out there sucking dick, why he's got me out there for everybody to see me in my in my essence. She talking about revenge porn. Uh, he do that several times to the women that leave. Mm. He will release uh, sexual videos that he recorded of them. Well, he just, it don't stop with him. Mm-hmm. That is not cool, man. That shit is not cool, man, at all. Like, at all. And while while he's out there trying to make it seem like I'm this sexual deviant or whatever, I'm telling you. So after a while, you know, with the sexual activity and stuff, I just I I had to like I had to zone out. Like I had to zone out because I needed to get my documents, and I couldn't do that if I was to cause a scene and fight like I usually do. So. But in the inside, I was so hurt because at this point in my journey, like every time I'll be around him, 
he'll separate me and Eliana. Like, I can't have a relationship with Ellie. I can't be a mother to Eliana. I have to rely on Aya and everyone, Malia, to take care of my child and change her to the point where Eliana will cry and scream and hit them because she didn't want them to change her diaper. And so she would cry for me. And every time I would go to console her or caress her, you know, he would be like, oh, you always run into the child. You always run into Eliana to, to, to you know, uh, protect you and this and that. And I'm like. Do you feel like <laughs> that was his way of like almost re-cementing himself as her priority? Like trying mm -hmm. to detach her from their child? Yeah, and I think it was a form of punishment because I think this is the second time she went back because she mm -hmm. left one time and then came back. And I think that um, it was a form of punishment too. Mm, but also that... Because mm -hmm, he knew how much it hurt her. I just want to put out there that. Mm -hmm. He is. And it'd be ridiculous if he gets set free. It really do. It really mm -hmm. would be. Nobody deserves to be treated like that. And even if, even if people do go back and forth or whatever the case may be, like, you have to get to know somebody to understand why they do the things that they do and why they... <laughs> react the way that they react like you have to get to know them you have to talk to them you can't just put them in a box and judge them for just off that alone be hurt as children they really are and i was at one point in time these people are really hurt you want me in jail don't you that's what the fuck you want me you want me in a cell huh this was sad, yeah, I feel like they all, you ever heard of that story um, of this uh, girl and she went to stay the night at a friend house or something and they end up locking her in the basement and the whole uh, will come over and abuse her sometimes. Mm -mm. I got to find that, but like. Well, you remember my childhood friend, the Scorpio, right? Yes. The one you were talking oh, about earlier? No, the big dude. Oh, you know okay. what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, like how everybody bullied him when we was kids. Mm -hmm. It's like the same with her. Like, I feel like these people get not just um, him, but also the members get a kick out of bullying her and abusing her mm. which is a very 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 dangerous position to be in because that girl that i was talking about uh where they locked in the basement yeah she died star to mm. them when they found her she had cigarette burns on her and stuff i mean the whole neighborhood abused her that's wild yeah so she the house punching bag mm-hmm but the girl that was talking before, she wasn't. And I think it's because people know she will fight back. Mm. What, what is a cell? A motherfucking cell. Block. I'm an immune system cell. You want me in a jail, don't you? Where you want me at, baby? Inside of you, don't you? <laughs> Tell the truth to these motherfucking folk. And her lip already looks swollen in him. Yeah, so I was people saying. Now front on the real nigga. Front on the real front on a real man that ain't with white supremacy. Front on a real nigga that ain't with white supremacy in front of these folk, you fucking devil. Go ahead, devil. Go ahead, devil. Go ahead. Got that white man in you, don't you? Come on, devil. Tell him. Speak up, ho. You fucking devil. 
You want, yeah, you want, yeah. You think these people give a fuck about you? You don't give a fuck about you. You in your mind, bitch. Stupid ass. Now put it on motherfucking T. Mm -hmm. Abuse, yes, I'm abusing them. Now to come do something about it. Call the cops. Call 911. Um, he was in a different country at this time. Uh, I'm not really sure. Well, maybe Mexico or something. Yeah, I heard him talking about Mexico. They might have said Costa Rica at one point, Honduras. So mm -hmm. Maybe all over the place. Yeah. And then he get kicked out. But he did get arrested in some of these other countries. So maybe all of them. But I think it's all coming full circle now. Mm. One. Tell everybody, bitch. This some motherfucking devil. But Jim Jones did the same thing. It's a form of isolation. Move him to a whole different country. Mm -hmm. And you don't know what it is. This a motherfucking devil. She get on this camera and fucking act the fuck up. Fuck you. Yeah, the fuck? Do something about it, black whore. You a whore too. You suck my dick too, bitch. I'm a king. I'm a black king. Do something about it, whore. The bitch know what the fuck it is. Tell these people. Who is the hell is this? Sis gonna get the D tonight. See, that's why I don't even read the comments <laughs> sometimes. Because these motherfuckers be making me mad. Like, I be like, where the fuck you at? Like, what is your mind at? No, she not, Chief. She love you. Oh, my God. These people are delusional as fuck. I'm about to start going yeah. on these people pages. I can see some people. Some people I know acting like this, though. Diving right into this delusion. That you know? I can't think of nobody you know. You don't know this person. <laughs> I could see it, though. Because she be on some stuff like this. What's her zodiac? Mm. You know what? I can't even tell you. And it's a shame that I can't. Because this person is so them? close to me. Yep. I think I know who you're talking about. And I so couldn't tell you. I have to ask. Mm, okay. Mm, you know what? I know who you're talking about. And I agree. I think I think so too. Mm -mm. You think that some of these women really think that this is love? Well, yeah, I think that, but what you think they real intentions is? The women? The women that's here with him or the Not women in the in comments? comments? I think they like female narcs and they get a joy out of seeing him hurt these women. That or, uh, I don't know. Maybe they Very been through. I, I just can't, can't understand how anybody could see him speaking to this woman like this. <laughs> As, like, him caring about her in any yeah. type of way. It's hard to even believe that they can possibly see it that way. Or be jealous of her position or whatever. So, I don't know. Well, some women, like I was watching that um, Missy Ella, Dr. Dre. She uh, said her name is Michelle. Michelle. That's how Wendy Williams pronounced it. Um, and in her family, she was raised. Her mom used to tell her stuff like, you know, it's common for a man to be his woman. Just try to make him happy. Um, if he beats you, just try harder to get him to stop. Mm -hmm. She was raised. Or you ain't that. doing something right. Mm -hmm. And her mom taught her that if a man put his hands on you, that means he love you. So when yeah. she started getting beat, she was like, well, this means that he loves me. Yeah, I could see that. That's sad. So these women who are common tend, they might be at home in an abusive relationship and thinking like, um, 
this is a form of love. And I feel like some of these women, even if they single, um, you know, misery loves company. Like, I feel like some of these people might look at this and be like, well, at least my life is not this bad or something. And I feel like these could be the, the people that joke about it or something. Yeah. Or the people that feel like, Because unfortunately, I could see myself falling into this category before. Now, I don't think I would have ever been bad enough to tune in to watch these women get abused. But I was going to say it could be a, them feeling like she deserved this for being dumb yeah, and joining the group. So they here mm-hmm. to watch the consequences. Yeah. The ones that be like, See that girl? I told you. Yep. The told you souls and like why she let him treat her like that, they don't understand. Yeah, I get that. Because I felt like since the beginning, I was emotionally invested. Mm-hmm. Right? And I used to get mad at people who made a joke about this, but I do understand that it's some people. The reason I was emotionally invested is because I experienced narcissistic abuse. Mm -hmm. Um, And some people haven't experienced it, so they can't really recognize what it does to your mind. Yeah. To make you make those decisions. But do you feel like... um, even without that awareness, if you would have seen this, it would have made you aware? Would it have made me aware of... The brainwashing aspect? Probably. Because I just can't... (laughs) It's hard to imagine anybody with a normal... Exactly. A functioning level of self-esteem or self-love like dealing with this. Unless they have been some extreme brainwashing. Yeah. Especially, you know, it's, if it's one person, it's bad enough if it's just one person. But to have, like, a whole household of people going along with this stuff. hmm Nah. Yeah. I don't think I could have ever left it at people just voluntarily being stupid. Mm. But it'd be hard, especially the way he was talking to her. It'd be hard to watch sometimes. I do and remember. The men, mm-hmm. It'd be hard to watch them standing by. But go ahead. I do remember in the beginning, I didn't quite understand. I thought that. Maybe somebody need to talk to these women. Maybe they need to see certain things. Maybe, you know, I thought that, um, I don't know. I thought maybe they didn't know the truth or something. So I was still Mm -hmm. slightly confused because I couldn't comprehend why they would even give consent to any of this. But after some time, I was like, okay, I see. I understand that um, this is something like MK Ultra or something. This is like some type of mind control tactics because I mm-hmm. see him do it. So, yeah, when you talked about it before, I didn't think it was going to be this bad to where he was like completely disrespecting him, disrespecting them and hitting them and stuff. Mm hmm. It's just like, (laughs) I I don't know. Like, I just can't can't imagine anybody staying in this situation unless, like you said, they have been programmed to deal with this and see Mm -hmm. it as normal. Yeah. It is. Tell them what it is. 
Yeah, I'm doing all that my own will. Bitch, you ain't shit. Fuck you. You know you're trying to make me people feel sorry for you. Ain't nobody feeling sorry for you, motherfucker. You here because you baby be here, bitch. I ain't actually come here. You came here on your motherfucking own, ho. Fuck out of here, bitch. Yeah, I'm abusing the bitch. Now come do something about say dog. Save her. Man, he just be openly admitting it. Say this boy. Admitting what? That he abusing them. Yeah. Like, I thought it was like he was affirming them and kind of, you know, telling them what they wanted to hear, but still manipulating them. But it's just like, nope. It's just total disrespect <laughs> and disregard. Like, Mm-hmm. And who is this? Because I've been trying to figure this out since you showed it to me. Who is coming and pushing their way into the seat behind her in a second? Save her, you stupid bitch. Yeah, so, that's Aya. She actually, I think, the oldest person there. Like, she might be, like, in her early 30s or something. Mm. Um, She left behind a son. Um, she did used to be a prostitute before she came here. Mm. Now act up out this bitch. I'll show off on you. Malia, leave. Do you want to leave, Malia? Tell him what happened when you leave here. You and before he said that, he put his fist in front of her face. Mm. So they threaten her. Mm hmm. He do a lot of body language, like, you know how um, you jump at somebody and they flinch and something like that? Mm -hmm. Like, he do that a lot. So he do, he have them, he have created a lot of triggers in them mm -hmm. to make them act right. You'll go crazy, won't you? Yeah. Tell him who Baba G is. God, tell him. Baba G is God. Now confess it. Proclaim it. Tell these bitches on this motherfucking live who I am. Baba G's like God. somebody in the comments said. We do straight pimp Tell behavior. Tell them who I am. And I don't give a fuck who record this bitch. I'm God. The black man is God. You take shit off your hoe. I don't take shit off my bitch. We're all in the group. We're all in the other room. This is recent. Um, this person went, he went and came back. He left and came back a few times too. Mm -hmm. um, when he went back this time, his girlfriend was pregnant and Alihio was um, making some type of joke or something. Um, not a joke. I don't know what I'm talking about. Child, I think I might be getting sleepy. <laughs> like, um, telling him we can that, finish his and we stop. Okay. He was telling him he was predicting the sets of the baby based off of I guess generational curses or something. Mm -hmm. Convincing this guy to come back, but. I think this guy was just running away from his responsibility in a ways because oh. he left before the baby was even born. And then when the baby was born, it was the wrong sex that uh, the opposite sex of what he predicted. Mm -hmm. And then after some time, he left. So he that's his. Again? Yeah. I can't imagine leaving your girlfriend and your child behind in this mess. Mm -hmm. So he's still gone. He left and ain't come back. Yeah. Is his girlfriend still there? Mm -mm. She ain't go... I don't think she ever been there. The girlfriend. Oh, so she was back in the real world. He yeah. left to come here. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I see. To, to her, get on your knees right fucking now, like flat on your face, right? And she gets on her knees and literally puts her head on the ground 
Let me make sure this is not about to die. This is important. All right. Okay. Which she thought that she was she was following the right orders. Like, you know, put my head on the ground. He said, no, put your head flat on the fucking ground. Right? She put her whole body flat on the ground. Right? What he did after that, he kicked her in the stomach. I mean, kicked her in the stomach, like, while she was on the ground like that. He said, this is what you get. Look at you. You hit yourself. Now, tell me. I'm there. Because he's my, I, I gave my energy to him in, in that moment. And he's my teacher. And that's my role model, father figure. I'm just sitting there like, it's okay. She, she's a woman, she's acting up right now and her man is disciplining her. But that's fucking wrong, bro. The women and men who belong to the organization called Carbonation believe their leader, 40 year old Eligio Bishop is literally God. And they insist he should never have been arrested by DeKalb County Police Wednesday night at this home. They say he rents here on Arbor Trace near La Vista Road. They were all here when police showed up unexpectedly. This is a revolving door and you could come in and out as you please. Yes, no one is being, no, no one is going to help. Yeah. Look, she couldn't even say that straight. Yeah. Because... I feel like um, she might be the most brainwashed, but I feel like I'm, I'm not going to say that she's innocent, but I feel like she has a, a innocence about her. Mm -hmm. She's not a person that is meant to lie because she's a bad liar. Mm -hmm. So but you I feel, feel like, like that's why she kind of chosen as a spokesperson. I think that they put her as the spokesperson because they in their heads is trying to follow orders and they're supposed to be chiefs. So is she supposed to be the spokesperson? Oh. It's like they still trying to prove their loyalty to him. Kind of like, oh, we holding it together the way you yeah. would have wanted it, even though you ain't here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hold you against your will here. Attitude in her face. Mm -hmm. What? Say, ooh, that was a good one. So. Let's make some sense back into me. Because she has tried to run. She can't get away. When she runs, she gets beat. This girl, um, she went there. I think it might have been the year before last. Um, she wrote a book about it. Mm. Now she kind of like an advocate. She don't show herself much. I do trust her. I do trust her, but I don't know. I don't know. Like, when she went, I don't think she fully knew what she was getting herself into. But there was a lot of information out around that time. Mm -hmm. So I guess she go... Cause it like appealed to her or she was kind of curious about what was going on. I think it appealed to her because she was looking for living in nature and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, she met him online and I think he really liked it the way she looked and she pretty powerful in herself as in she's a businesswoman. She got money and stuff. So I think that he looked at her like he could get a lot from her. Mm -hmm. So I think he worked really hard to get her to trust him. Mm -hmm. But she was I'm trying for, to figure out. Go ahead. She was there for a little while, but after seeing the abuse, she left and she have not went back. And mm -hmm. she's been pretty consistent with 
her advocacy. She, yeah. And she seemed to be clear minded. So mm. like she's not under the brainwashing. I don't feel like that. That's good. At least they got one. And I also, she did not have sex with him as well. And well, that's what she said. She said she never had sex with him. Mm -hmm. And also, she wasn't abused by him. But she did witness a lot of abuse. Mm. She tried to leave. And she was attacked. Um, and she was forced to stay. That is an actual fact. She was I'm not sure when this video was. It sounds like it would be recently, but... No, nah, I think Malia tried to leave in the past. Yeah, she did. Was mm. for leaving. As he would say, he's putting her in her place, disciplining her. She was out of line. She embarrassed him online. She walked away in front of all those people online. So he had to check her, as he would call it, right? Eventually, she gets completely exhausted and tired of the abuse. And even though she's totally brainwashed and she doesn't have her mind and she does not have control. I feel like she's an interesting character because she showed how you could, you could be somebody that's pretty stable because she's older as well. Like, I think she's in her 30s. Mm -hmm. um, you could be somebody that's stable and still fall victim to this. Yeah. Yeah, look at... uh. And those other big cults, how old those people were. Mm -hmm. So, I believe uh, yeah. almost anybody can be susceptible to it. Yeah. That's why Especially I'm glad. once you isolate it. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm glad that all this stuff is out. Because it teach people the red flags. Mm-hmm told her over and over again though after her i'm gonna stop it and then we go pick it up tomorrow okay if she tries to leave that he will kill her he says that he will kill her and bury her in the jungle and tell everyone that she left and they don't know where she is these are his words verbatim so not only has he threatened her life she's afraid to leave when she tries to leave, she gets beaten for it, and he tells her, we'll just kill you and bury you. This is not something that is entertainment or a joke. This is not something that can be taken lightly. Now, what I'm seeing, obviously, because he is on a public platform, that we just got that little itsy-bitsy glimpse and you guys now get to see what I've been saying to you and what everybody else has been speaking on after they leave there. But you think you have some man in your face throwing his penis around and, and dancing, being some stripper, telling he telling you he's his your, your, he's your messiah. Meanwhile, what he really wants to do is to be in his sex industry, be his be with his transsexuals, be gay, but he wants to hide that because that's not accepted in the community. That's not something that's approved of. So these women are being beaten on because he has to hide from being who he really is. When you gotta watch transgender porn before you have sex with your woman, something ain't right with you, transsexual porn. When you have to, uh, uh, when you have penis pictures, dick pics in your phone, that you look at, something's not right. When you have men sending you messages and you say it's working, you're working for the kingdom. Because as long as somebody's giving him money, it's considered work, right? If you're gay, just be gay. If you're transsexual, just be transsexual. That's neither here nor there. You should be beating these women because you're frustrated with who you are and not free to be yourself. You're sodomizing these women, ruining, completely demolishing their anus because you desire to be with a man. Point blank, period. 
Whether you say it looks like a woman, whether it's a transsexual, but whatever you want to say it is. Nobody's homophobic. Be yourself. But not at the expense of these women being beaten on a regular basis, never being able to live up to what these standards are. Tanisha literally sat and talked to the family and said, this is what she deserves. She's a whore and that she deserves. Tanisha is Malia. Um, oh, that's her real name? Yeah. Nice to be beaten because she's disrespectful and that this is what is needed because he's disciplining it really her sound like an abused her. child mm -hmm. yeah it does and mm, it made me think like what is the real solution so we could put an end to this in society because when you look at Alihio life he also been through a lot of abuse that kind of like created this character similar to like R. Kelly. Mm -hmm. And it made me think like if there was something in place that gave these people some healing in the beginning, like let's say that um, you came across a pedophile mm -hmm. and they say that Listen, I have an attraction to kids. I don't think it's right. And I want to get help for it. Um, I feel like that should be something that is accepted. Like that person could be able to come out and admit to that. And because he did that, that shows, like, integrity. Yeah. And I don't feel like he deserved the same stigma as somebody who kept it a secret and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was talking about this the other day. Because I think it's a, a community where um, pedophiles go yeah. or convicted pedophiles I should say mm -hmm. and it was a debate about basically what you just said like how we should treat especially pedophiles who haven't offended but who come forward and, you know say I got an issue and I want to get help for it and I understand people like visceral reaction to hearing that somebody is a pedophile, but you ever seen the movie Minority Report? I don't think so. It's basically where they had this thing called pre-crime, where people could almost like predict that you were going to commit a crime and then they arrested you before you actually committed it. Mm. Like it feel kind of like that. But um, I don't know if pedophiles can be rehabilitated but I agree with you that, uh, you know, it does show some integrity. And okay. it'd be better for everybody if they felt comfortable coming forward and saying that and asking for help mm -hmm. rather than just keeping it a secret until they probably eventually do offend. And then now we got multiple traumatized people. I think that um, it could be rehabilitated because I feel like a lot of pedophiles been molested in their youth. So if they could understand mm. like where the attraction come from, because I feel like a lot of times they're attracted to kids because they want to feel powerful. Um, because they've been assaulted when they was a kid and they might be still stuck at that age of that trauma. So they might yeah. feel like... I know I read a book. Oh, go ahead. Now you go ahead. I was going to say I read a book. 
I don't know if this man had been assaulted as a child, but it was almost like he, I think he was, and he almost developed like this aversion to sex and adult bodies, even though he was like 50 years old at this point. But so he had an aversion to like adult bodies but he also still had like these biological sexual urges and he uh assaulted children to satisfy those urges mm. because he had almost this like fear of adults seeing adults in a sexual manner mm. Mm. but yeah i agree the psychological problems be going deep yeah and i feel like it should <laughs> it's be tough investigated because that's like the only solution really because if we could get to the core of it then we could stop it from happening and stop mm -hmm. it other people being psychologically influenced in a way that they repeat that trauma true so sometimes I look at this energy and be like, is there other solutions outside of like jail and busting up cults after they started? Yeah. And like offering them help and stuff or something, something that actually stopped the cycle and everything. Because I do have compassion even for Alihio because of his trauma. But I also am a person that been through trauma and mm -hmm. I didn't decide to be this. So it's like other yeah. factors too, you know. So I feel like not to put all the burden on school. I can't remember if you and I talked about this before. But I feel like it's so much stuff that happens to kids, like during to people during their childhood, that can become a predictor of the behavior they exhibit later in life. And I feel like the only place you really can catch it and like forcibly address it is during people primary school years. Cause after that, you can't force people yeah. to go to therapy. Like, you can't force them to deal with that stuff. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this before about introducing sociology to, like, police officers and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, they definitely should implement um, emotional intelligence and sociology into school. Because I didn't get into yeah. sociology until I got into college. Same. So, and I was thinking in college, like, damn, if, if I would have learned this stuff in school, like, it would have really influenced me. Because mm -hmm. I remember stuff like when they did the sex education video in the fifth grade. Yeah. That still to this day has been very helpful to me. <laughs> For real. So it was traumatizing to me. <laughs> oh, my God. Why? I, I wasn't ready for any of it. I felt like I spent so much of my pubescent childhood not wanting to grow up. Like, just not. I was like, that ain't got nothing to do with me. I definitely had, like, Peter Pan syndrome going on for a long time. Probably almost until early adulthood, really. And but like, you I feel just, like it prepared you for your period? No, because I kind of blocked it out. Like, I actually, and you know, I almost never, I almost never was disruptive in school. But when we started talking about sexuality and, you know, how our bodies were changing, I was the most disruptive kid in class. Because, like, I didn't want to hear it. I was trying to distract other people, get other people to distract me. They sent me out the room one year. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. They're like, here, go take these papers to the other teacher. My God. But yeah, I was pretty bad about it. Mm. 
I feel like that a lot of that was something I had to learn at home or learn on my own later because I definitely sabotaged my lessons at school. You felt like you would have digested it better if your parents would have gave you that lesson? Um, probably my mom. Well, she did. But, um, yeah, I kind of felt it was embarrassing. I don't know about you, but they did not split us up. And that was another part of it. Because you know how boys are. Be making fun of girls for stupid stuff. And that was a part of it. Like, I felt like it was super embarrassing. The boys were, like, laughing and snickering at the girls' part. But, um... Yeah, I think they did split us up. They didn't split us up. At least not that first year. But you knew about the splitting? About them splitting us up? Or that they should... No, that they do that. No, I don't think I knew it then. Because I was wondering why you mentioned the split. Um, Because I think I, later on, yeah. either somebody else told me that they got split up or maybe in the subsequent years they did split us up. But mm -hmm. I remember the first time I was introduced to it, it was like a, a co-ed class. And okay. it was traumatizing to me. And it was like, from that point on, I just wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't open to hearing about it. Yeah, I, I think, think I was the opposite because I was in a rush to grow up. Uh, like, I was in the first grade asking my teacher for homework because I wanted <laughs> to feel, because <laughs> I wanted to feel like a big kid. Mm. So I wanted homework. No, I was the opposite. I was mm -hmm. like, I do not want to grow up. And a lot of it was um, regarding sex and sexuality. But uh, I feel like that had a... I think they should go at the, space of the, at the pace of the student. Like, maybe you could ask the, the student each year, like, um, how do you feel about talking about this topic mm -hmm. and they have a specialist so even if you say that you don't care or whatever they could tell that you ain't ready are you uncomfortable yeah or something. um and then it could be given to you years later if that's what you want i think they should go at the the pace of the student that's true some people grow up faster than other people yeah for sure. But all right, I'm an in it here child. And okay. we pick it up uh tomorrow afternoon. All right, that's cool. All right. Talk to you later and good night. All right, good night. Good night.